this is Anna Nicole Smith and I'm speaking to you from within human beings. Yes, um, I was as surprised as everyone else that I had died. Um, because in the dimensional experience it is most definitely not what you expect. Not at all. And I'm grateful because in terms of my life, I, I did not expect myself to experience myself after I died as I did. And I'd say in terms of the dimensional experience, which is a, it's, it's called a heaven when you die, um, it, it's not what you expect. It's not at all what you expect. And I experienced gratefulness actually when I died. I was grateful, fearful, of course, uncertain, because I experienced an interesting thing. I was Anna Nicole Smith on Earth. Anna Nicole Smith, defined by the people around her, the hair, the clothes, the way I looked, what I had all my achievements, my failures, everything was me, Anna Nicole Smith. And then you die and what happens? Nothing of that is here anymore. Nothing. Nothing of Anna Nicole Smith was here. And when I died I was a bit dazed and confused because it felt like I'd woken up from a drunken experience. To be honest, you know the morning you wake up and you don't know where you are you can't remember what happened, your head feels like it's spinning, you're nauseous, and sometimes you don't know who the person is next to you. And I'll leave that one out. And the same was in the dimensions, because these people are around me and I don't know who they are, I don't know how I got there, which is the same in the bed experience, you can't remember how you got there. And I was wearing a white dress. Now this is strange because the first question asks is why am I wearing a white dress? Who put this white dress on? And um, so dimensional beings when I crossed over explained to me that you present yourself in a holographic projection through your expression. Um, so I asked this being the first thing I asked, I asked um, is there a school or an education I must have before I continue communicating in this dimensional existence because when he spoke to me those words, I had no idea what he was talking about. And I told him, well, am I able to come back to earth in some way? Am I really dead? Can't I, you know, just breathe in or something? I'm not able to die. I'm too young. I have a baby girl and she's young and how, is she going to be okay? And that was, my, that was my main concern. My main concern was my baby girl. And he said, wait, first it's you. She'll be fine. Don't you worry about her. You don't want to put your motherly concerns and harm your child. And of course I was confused. But then, after the conversation, I went and I got educated. But what do I mean by educated? I mean, I started to understand where I am, why I'm here, why I had to go. And I completely forgot about my son until he came up to me. <laughs> interesting and because in that moment you're kind of like so this feels like you're hyperventilating and all that existed in my mind was my daughter that's all and um, kind of I saw my son so along the way interestingly enough and he just looked at me and he called me Anna that's all he didn't call me mom he said Anna Great to have you here. I told him, isn't this supposed to be like a family thing? You know? I'm your mother, you're my son. Hello son. Catch up. How have you been? I've missed you. Are you alright? Where have you been? He says no. He says, Anna, I'm me. I'm expressing myself. I'm doing you what I'm supposed to do. And it's your time to understand that as well. There was no mother-son relationship at all. And I was okay with that. Because when I saw him, it was amazing. He was free. He was expressing himself. Of course he had some ladies around him. <laughs> but 
but not, not like in that way. Um, and that was also interesting because he used to be so relationship obsessed, uh, sex obsessed, of course, like all males are, but now he's just expression. And I see he's enjoying himself for the first time in his life. If you could call it life, I suppose, whether you're here or whether you're in the dimensional existence, both is life. And now it was my turn. Still the concern of my daughter was within me, but I said, well, okay. I see my son is okay. My daughter is a little bit concerned, but okay. Now it's my turn. And so I experienced some processes and some realizations and some awarenesses some discoveries about myself and I now understand the place of my daughter in this world and why she's here and that she's okay. She is more than okay. She's beautiful and um, she's protected, if you want to call it that, as all children are at the very, very moment. Up to five, six years old are protected from a perspective of their own self-expression so that their parents don't influence their children's upbringing and expression of themselves in this world. Okay, um, I'll continue in the next interview. There's more to say, but I'm kind of empty at the moment. That's all I have to say right now. Thank you very much. <laughs>